CES has come and gone, but there have been a bunch of cool device announcements, and one of those devices is already in the office. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and AT&T's Pantech Burst is in the house. Now, this is a $50 smartphone, but it's not only a cheap smartphone, it also has 4G LTE capabilities. So, AT&T's new 4G LTE service, available to the masses at a pretty reasonable price here, and this is a decent smartphone as well. It's packing a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, a 4 inch Super AMOLED display and a 5 megapixel camera with 720p HD video recording. Is this a device to get? Should you maybe consider a quick messaging device or something else on AT&T? We'll find out in the review. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with a bunch of phones for use in our one paw bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, let's say, you know, get the Pantech Burst, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, and all those settings so when you walk out the door, you're good to go. Mom's got her call set settings all set up, she got her camera settings ready to go, and she's good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look at this Pantech Burst. Is this the best 4G LT device out there for 50 bucks, or should you go with something else, maybe spend a little bit more money? on another device. We'll find out starting right now. So with 2012 comes a slew of new Android phones and it's proof that just because you pay 50 or 75 bucks for an Android device, it doesn't mean that it has to be an incredibly low end device. Here's the Pantech Burst. This is the first device that we're seeing from a CES 2012 in Las Vegas and it's available as of January 22nd on AT&T. Now this thing's 50 bucks but it comes with some pretty awesome specs. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, a 5 megapixel camera on the back, with 720p HD video recording, and it's got a four inch Super AMOLED Plus display, which I need to turn the brightness all the way up for the review, but it's got a front facing camera as well. It's packing Android 2.3.5 with Pantex custom user interface. So it's really a decent device for 50 bucks, and you know they're, they're running this deal, or they're going to run this deal when it comes out on AT&T. Pantech released two devices at CES. They announced the Burst, and they announced the Pantech Element, which is their first and also a waterproof tablet. You can get both of those for $249.99, as opposed to buying them both separately and paying $349.99. So you can save $100 bucks if you're willing to sign a two-year agreement on both. But, you know, it's a mid-range device, you know, given the, given the way the body looks, given the price point, but still, it's packing some pretty awesome specs. And, you know, I'll be the first to criticize Android, you know, manufacturers for making these kind of low-end devices that really tarnish the reputation of Android. But this one's a nice step forward. And in addition to some awesome specs, it also supports AT&T's 4G LTE connectivity. So you can see here out of the box, you've got a Pantech interface and you get the typical stuff pre-installed. You get AT&T Code Scanner, AT&T Family Map, AT&T Navigator. You get some Pantech stuff like Clock Tools, Compass, uh, Converter. You get uh, Live TV, which is an AT&T thing. My AT&T Navigation, of course, which is Google PC Suite Connector, Quick Light, S-Board. We'll have to take a look at that uh, later in the review. Sketchpad. You get video player, and you'll see some of the icons are uh, switched up as well as part of Pantex custom UI here, but voice memo, and then on the AT&T side, YP Mobile. Now, out of the box, the AT&T stuff can be uninstalled by going to Applications, going to Manage Applications, and we can see what's running here. Family Map, for example, we can come right in here and uninstall it. So AT&T's really listened to their consumers. They realize they may not want this bloatware pre-installed, and they allow you the opportunity to uninstall. Now, in terms of the way the device looks, it's definitely got a mid-range feel to it. You've got your micro USB charging port over here on the right side, your volume rocker over on the left side, and then your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power button up top along with the camera on the back. Now it looks like this is a metal battery door, but it's actually not. It's plastic, but it's got kind of this smooth uh, surface that kind of resembles uh, smooth metal, if you will, with the Pantech logo here on the back. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of a ploy, but still kind of nice to have. Uh, capacitive buttons down here at the bottom, menu, home, back, and then search, AT&T logo up top. So, you know, it fits well in the hand. Four inch display, I've often said, is a nice sweet spot between, you know, 3.5 inches maybe being too small for a lot of people and 4.7 inches being, you know, way too big for a lot of people. It's a nice balance. And again, for 50 bucks, you really can't go wrong with the features. But you're gonna see some Pantech customizations here in a lot of different places. Let me go ahead and turn Wi-Fi on so we can get that kicked on uh, and ready to go. And then, of course, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, alarm, and sound. I'm having a little, a few data issues. Nothing major with the phone itself. Uh, just a small problem on the provisioning side uh, with AT&T with the review unit. So nothing to worry about there. It's just the uh, the SIM card doesn't have the uh, the proper data feature uh, on it. So no, you know, no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's not, a, not an indicator of the phone, but just keep that in mind for the review. That's why I'm turning on Wi-Fi because you know I'm not a big fan of turning on Wi-Fi in reviews. But 1,650 milliamp hour battery here, and you know, it's a little bit on the small side, but the nice benefit to that is it's a smaller device, a smaller display, so it should work pretty well under moderate use. But you can see, like I said a minute ago, some pretty, you know, I wouldn't say heavy Pantech customizations, but you notice the skin that's pre-installed. You get a dock down here with a call button, messaging, browser, 
and then of course your uh, your button here to go into the menu and you'll notice things scroll left to right very similar to TouchWiz uh, 4.0 and very similar to iOS as well in the way it scrolls left and right as opposed to up and down which we've seen you know in traditional Android layouts you know with the exception obviously of ice cream sandwich so we'll go in here into the call app for example let me pull this away to make sure there aren't any numbers that are dialed but I just want to show you some of the customization differences you can see real differences here you got some island keys and you've got some big buttons down here at the bottom the ability to add a contact to your uh, your list to call people, of course, and to do voicemail as well. And then up top, you've got your taps for call log, your contacts, your favorites, and then you can scroll over to groups and local search via YP Mobile. So you've got a couple of different options here, and it's a decent looking setup. So we can go in here and say, you know, for example, and easily delete those. It's nice and fast. You know, I've noticed this device is very responsive thanks to that 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. And again, here's the messaging interface just so you can see. And one thing I really like is let's say you get a lot of contacts in here. You know, you've got Aaron, Steve, John, uh, and Billy Bob. Well, you can organize them by date, which means, you know, the more recent of the text messages always appear at top. That's the typical layout that you see on most phones, you know, based on when you receive the message. So the most recent message, that thread automatically pops up to top. Well, what you can do with the burst, you can come in here with date and you can also switch it to contact name. So in that case, it's going to arrange them in alphabetical order. So Aaron, Billy Bob, Chris, and Steve are all going to be in alphabetical order as opposed to being in date order, you know, which means whoever texted you uh, recently is going to be at the top. So it's just one of those little personal things that I think they've done a good job at. You know, I personally like to see everything in order of date, but there may be some people out there that like to see it in order of name. You know, maybe they want to scroll down and find the find the person's name. If they have a lot of text message contacts, maybe they want to, you know, scroll down to D or E as opposed to scrolling through and seeing when that person text messaged them last. So it's just a nice change and it's uh, nice that Pantech included that. You know, and to their credit, I will say, you know, it's an early user interface here. They haven't been in the smartphone industry for too long, or at least back in the smartphone industry, if you will, for too long, but they've done a pretty decent job with their skin. Now, I wouldn't want to see the skin on a $200 device or a $300 device at Verizon or at AT&T, but given the price point of all these devices, the breakout at about 100 bucks, this device at about 50 bucks, and then, of course, the Pantech Pocket on AT&T, it's a decent user interface for mid-range users, and uh, you know, I think that's where they're where they're targeting and they've done a pretty decent job with making the user interface uh, compatible with that demographic. So they've done a decent job there. Now out of the box, you get two keyboards. You get Android keyboard and of course swipe. If swipe is your thing, and we can keep it on the Android keyboard here. Since this is gingerbread, it's a stock gingerbread keyboard. And again, you can see how quick this device operates. Transition effects very fast over here, thanks to that dual core processor. But we'll say the, uh, the quick brown fox is hungry for lunch. Quick Brown Fox hasn't had lunch yet. So Quick Brown Fox is hungry for lunch and of course you've got your ability to change the settings directly from the keyboard along with your uh, your voice input right there and then of course you can switch over into portrait mode or landscape mode rather and you've got full four inches to operate with. So it's nice you know again four inches is a nice sweet spot this should be perfectly fine for somebody with larger thumbs or somebody that has a hard time typing on a touch screen device but still very easy to use and of course if you like swipe and it's your thing it's pre-installed on this device as well. So good job on the keyboard front. Let's take a look at browser. And again, it's running on Wi-Fi right now because I am having a slight issue with the provisioning on the SIM card. Again, no issue with the phone, but just a little bit of a, a SIM card challenge. So I hate to use Wi-Fi, but we're gonna have to use it for the review. So phone dog's loading up right now. And again, the page is still loading, but you can see pinch to zoom relatively responsive here. Again, you know, keep in mind that this device out of the gate is 50 bucks. What that means is it's going to be available at AT&T for 50 bucks. It's probably going to be available at third-party retailers like Wirefly and some of those for free if you sign up for a two-year agreement. So you can get this device for a really reasonable price and for 50 bucks that's a pretty decent, actually that's pretty good in my opinion. You know I always kind of judge it. Would this be a device that I would carry? And this is borderline a device that I would carry. Super AMOLED display? Check. 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor? Check. That's a nice benefit as well. And again very quick and easy to use and very pocketable as well. So, you know, they've done a really good job on this, but pinch to zoom, very responsive. And of course, I can jump in here and you can really see the Pantech customizations here with the way the menu looks. We'll come into a new window. And let's go back to my tabs or my windows, if you will. And you can see I can easily scroll back and forth between those by clicking down here at the bottom. And it gives me a nice preview of where I left off, or not a preview, but a, you know, an actual page preview, if you will. And you'll notice that when I go to Windows, it doesn't actually show where I left off. But again, pinch to zoom, very responsive. Transition effects are pretty impressive over here on the browser as well. They've done a really decent job with this. And text looks good. You can see the Super AMOLED display really doing its job. Very clear, and even when zoomed in, just beautiful looking text. 
and I'm uh, overall very impressed. They've done a really nice job with this. So good looking on Pantex front. And then of course, let's go back into the home screen and take a look at the widgets. Now, you do get some widgets out of the box. You've got Pantech custom widgets along with the Android stuff, and you'll see some basic widgets here. Bookmark, calendar, clock, contacts, email, and more. So we'll go into, uh, let's just say memo, for example. And you'll see there's the memo widget right there. And we can take a look at some of the other custom Pantech ones. And you get seven home screens on this device, so plenty of room to play around. We'll go into calendar, and you'll notice you have the option to select a few different styles. So it doesn't look like the widgets are customizable, but you can at least select a style and go from there. So they're not necessarily customizable by size, but you can come in much like HTC Sense. They give you, you know, two or three options depending on the widget where you can really kind of customize it and make it fit on that particular home screen. So you see contacts, for example, two different styles here. And I'm assuming when I click on one that won't fit on the home screen. We'll go to uh, old man, for example, no space on this screen. So it does, you know, kind of direct me over to another home screen, but let's go down into, uh, let's say, weather, for example. We'll go into weather and see what it brings up. We've got two different styles here. So we can bring up the big style, pop that out on the home screen. No weather data available just yet. And we'll have to add a new city uh, when we can get GPS to fully function there. But you can see, you know, decent widgets, but again, in comparison to TouchWiz 4.0 or Sense 3.5 or some of these operating systems, Motorola's UI, that have been really fleshed out and kind of, you know, tweaked and retweaked over the years, you can really tell that this is an operating system or a uh, user interface, rather, in its infancy still. For 50 bucks, keeping in mind where this device stands in relation to the two or $300 devices that are running since 3.5 and TouchWiz 4.0, I think it's a really, really impressive uh, device. You've got like 15 different clock styles and more. So again, for where this device stands, a really decent performer.